Hey, Keith Van Wimmer, Van Tech Consulting. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the channel if this is your first time. Uh, and if you're currently a subscriber, I'd like to thank you for subscribing and appreciate your support. We had a comment from, uh, from one of our subscribers that was asking about loss budgets. And, uh, you know, when you're dealing with fiber, you know, it's good to know or set your expectations as to you know what the loss budget is and that way when you go out and do testing we know if the fiber is actually good or not because we can compare it to a calculated value so when we talk about calculated values um, there's all kinds of different standards in uh, in fiber optics and uh, you know we have you know Example TIA. So the TIA is the Telecommunications uh, Industry Association. They're part of the um, of the ANSI, uh, American National Standards Institute, and these guys basically focus on um, what we we'll call campus environment, right? So, in other words, enterprise networks. Then we have um, Telcordia. So Telcordia used to be Bell Labs, and when the Bell operating companies got broken up, no single operating company could own Bell Labs, so they spun off and became Telcordia. It's now, I believe, owned by Ericsson. We have the International Electrotechnical Commission. So this is a uh, international standards organization which covers connectors, things like this, um, you know, all kinds of different electronics uh, connectors and, and things. Um, they also own all the standards for multi-mode fiber. So when we talk about fiber, we have single mode, we have multi-mode. Multi-mode primarily short runs, enterprise, uh, LAN applications, you know, maybe some, uh, you know, a few campus environments could, could operate. But again, not, not something we use in the outside uh, plant world or what we'll call a carrier grade. The ITU is the International uh, Telecommunications um, Union. And these guys here are the ones that own the standards for all of the stuff that, you know, if you're outside plant or uh, carrier grade, they own all those standards. So they own GPON, they own Next, G, um, Next Gen PON, BPON, EPON, APON, um, you know, all of these different standards. They also own all the standards for single mode fiber. So when we talk about single mode fiber, these guys, because they only deal with single mode, I believe they only have one standard that's associated with a multi-mode. But when they deal, um, and that standard, by the way, if you're interested for multi-mode, is a graded index multi-mode, and we'll maybe cover that uh, in a future video. Let us know down in the comments if you wanna if you wanna learn more about specifically multi-mode fiber versus single mode fiber. So anyway, um, these guys refer to fiber, the different. Uh, single mode fibers as types of fiber. So in my world, since I deal with um, multi-mode and single mode, I think of multi-mode as a type of fiber and single mode as a type of fiber. Um, so it kind of gets confusing to folks that don't understand or, or not, uh, you know, highly familiar with the standards and with all the all the different uh, ins and outs there. We call these fiber, the single mode fibers, we call these ITU fiber classes. Um, there's a bunch of different classes of fiber. The most common class here is G.652, and this is what you'll hear people refer to as SMF or OS2. This is, um, you know, the general purpose, Swiss Army knife of fiber it covers all the wavelengths that we're going to use, um, you know, etc. The current iteration, you know, they have 652 A, B, C, D. The current iteration is D, which is a um, zero water peak fiber. And again, let us know down in the uh, in the comments if you want to get down into the weeds on on the specific fibers, what water peak is, etc. You know, so on and so forth. Um, the next one that we have is a G.653, and these, by the way, are standards numbers. So this is a full ITU standard, you know, multiple pages with all kinds of specifications. Um, so the 653 is single mode uh, dispersion shifted optical fiber, 654 is zero dispersion wavelength, 655 is a non-zero dispersion shifted, and then 657 is um, bend and sensitive. This is the newest uh, type or class of fiber that uh, that's out there, and so this is um, less susceptible to macro bending if if uh, 
if you're familiar with that. So when we talk about this um, in, in fiber terms or in networking terms, common networking terms, the most common fiber you folks are gonna be dealing with is G.652 and G.657 specifically in PON applications. 652, 657 are predominantly the exact same fiber it's just that this guy here suffers less loss in a macro band. So a macro band, again, if we're talking about uh, about macro bending, you know, a macro band is just a high or a small radius bend. So if we were if we were dealing with uh, with a jumper, you know, this would be a normal normal radius. And so if you get this too tight then what happens is light will actually escape out of the glass and that is a macro band causes high loss, okay? So, that said. So these are all the standards on the different types of fiber. So when we talk about loss budgets and power budgets, this is important information to understand. These numbers here, any manufacturer that makes fiber, whether it's Corning or uh, Prismium or you know Sumitomo, whomever's making the actual glass, in order to call it a G.652 class of fiber or type of fiber, it has to fall within these specifications. So at 1310, it can lose no more, no greater than 4 dB per kilometer. At 1383, that's our water peak. Again, uh, if you folks are interested in understanding water peaks and things like that, let me know in comments and we'll uh, maybe do a video about it. But dot three, notice that these A and B don't have a number there because it doesn't work. The water peak is too high. There's too much loss there. At 1550, a dot three dB per kilometer. If you had 652B, it would be dot three five. And at 652A, it would be dot four dB per kilometer. And then we get to 1625. Um, Again, this is a dot four dB, and these these are the maximum allowable losses that that manufacturer can make. That doesn't mean that they can't be less than that. So Corning makes SMF 28E, which is a enhanced G.652 type of fiber, um, and they'll lose. They'll do here at 1550. I have a, a spool of fiber that. Um, they tested it out at 0.19 dB per kilometer. So again, you, you don't build your network on what the manufacturer does. You build your networks on these values, right? Because again, if you have Corning glass and then you put in, um, you know, some off-brand that that uh, that that's all that was available because there's a shortage. You know, you have dot one nine on the SMF twenty eight, but at dot three, your network can start getting a little funky if you calculated everything out at dot one nine. All right, um, and then getting macro bending losses and things. But everything about fiber optics is based on standards, right? So again, when we talk about loss budgets and power budgets, you have to be familiar with all of these various standards. Okay, let's start with the fiber span. This is a fiber span. This is a launch box. It's one kilometer. Um, we got a couple connectors on it, and that's a span of fiber, all right? If we just had a transmitter and a receiver on it, then this would be a fiber link. So a fiber link is A to Z. A fiber span is A to B, B to C, C to D, etc. So if you put a couple of these and link them together or connected them together um, you know, with a coupler, then this would be span one, this would be span two, this would be um, the A end over on this side, and this would be the Z end on this side, and these two with the coupler would become a fiber link. So within our fiber link, there are multiple components. We have the fiber itself, we have connectors, we have splices, we have mechanical splices, we have splitters, we have combiners, yeah, anything that's within that link that we insert into it um, is standardized. The values, the losses, um, acceptable tolerances, it's all standardized. Um, so each standards body has their own set of specifications. So on this table here, the red is the ITU, the ITU IEC Telcordia, so the international standards. 
The green is the TIA standards. So when you look at this and we start going across, these are the values that we're going to use to calculate out our loss budget. Okay, again, we're not going to go with, um, with what the manufacturer says, we're going to go with what the standards say because you can always be better than what the, the requirement is, right? So when we look at this, we're doing our, our budget based on G.652, 657. It's the most common fiber out there again. Wavelengths 1310, 1550. Our maximum fiber attenuation based on the uh, G.652D is .4 for 1310, .3 for 1550. Connector loss, the IEC says that for a mated pair of connectors, and that's two connectors that are put together in a coupling, okay? So these must be placed together. Um, there's some folks out there that will tell you that it is half a dB per individual connector, meaning that when you couple these together, you'll have one dB of loss, and that is incorrect, all right? So it's half a dB per mated pair. And then the splice loss here. Now the splice loss is, um, there's a lot of confusion on this. There's a lot of different values out there. Uh, some companies will go with a 0.15 max splice loss. Um, some will go with a dot three, some go with a dot one. And basically all of these numbers have actually been um, derived from some other value, okay? The way the splice standard reads in Telcordia GR20, it states that the mean splice loss cannot exceed dot one and no single splice can exceed a dot three. So they did that because when you're doing dissimilar fibers, um, let's say a pre 90s fiber to a post 90s fiber, you could get higher loss there because again, they, they kind of been, uh, improve the manufacturing processes and the accuracy of the fiber and, and all that wonderful fun stuff. So what this means is if you had 10 splices and nine of them were zero and the 10th one was a dot three, your mean splice loss would be 0 0.03 would be the mean. All right. So again, you can do you know, it's, it's your network and the standards are just recommendations, okay? So you don't have to, you know, the company, if your company says a dot three, it's a dot three. What that's going to impact is your overall performance as far as loss, not necessarily transmission performance. The TIA, they deal again with multi-mode and there's a couple different flavors, you know, 50 micron core and a 62 micron core. There's, there's actually five, uh, five basic, um, Classes or types of, of multi-mode, uh, OM1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's optical mode, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, and they have different different transmission characteristics. But on multi-mode, 850 nanometers is a 3.5 dB loss per kilometer. At uh, 1300, 1.5 dB. Their connector, allowable connector loss is a 0.75, okay, versus the dot five. They just went with the maximum allowable splice loss value. So they're saying it's a dot three. And that's fine. I mean, if you're only going to, you know, multi-mode doesn't ever really go greater than about, no greater than a kilometer, but, uh, or shouldn't be. But again, you know, this is not that impactful. But if you use these numbers when you calculate your budget, there is an impact to that. So if we look down here, this is we're going to go through this in depth in uh, part two of this. But uh, if we look down here and we're going to do a fiber loss budget, um, real quick, we have 14 and a half kilometers of fiber that at 0.4 um, dB per kilometer and dot three, we're going to get a 5.8 and a 4.35 dB. Our fusion splices, we have five or four of those. We'll call them dot one per splice. Uh, that's our mean, right? So dot four, dot four dB of loss there. We have two terminating connectors, so that's one dB of loss. So our total fiber link loss as calculated at 1310 would be a 7.2, and our total loss at 1550 would be a 5.75. If you take that exact same network and use the TIA values, that gives us a 9.95 total link loss. Now, when you look at that, you know, we're, we're talking about what, uh, 4.2 dB, that's quite a bit. Keep in mind that 
three dB is a is a having of the power. That means that you've lost 50% of your power right off the top. Okay, so that's over 50% difference between these two numbers and then again with the seven you know we've got almost 3 db there so again you can see where that's kind of um, impactful so again we're going to go back into these um, and we'll delve into the actual um, what i just did the calculations here and uh, and get um, you know more into the weeds on on all the different components and how we're going to calculate that out and how to look at it so i think we're going to go ahead we'll end this video here and then we'll uh, go into the next video with the uh, total calculations and uh, i want to say thanks for joining us hope you got something out of this watch for uh, part two of this video if you're not a subscriber uh, currently we ask that you consider mashing the uh, subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications um, if you are a current subscriber, thank you again for your channel support. We appreciate it, and thanks for watching. Be safe.